So you grew up in Portland. I did. Did you have a musical scene in your house, musical family? I mean, my mom, she's from L.A., and when she was younger, she pursued jazz singing. Yeah. And my dad wasn't really a part of my life, but he was a musician. Um, so I think it's just in the blood. And you had an aunt who was generous. I mean, yeah. She lived in San Francisco, um, and every time I would go and visit my grandmother in L.A., I would go straight to the piano. And she bought me a keyboard, and I used to sit at that keyboard for hours, wow. listening to music and learning how to play the songs by ear. Yeah. How old were you when that happened, when she gave you the oh, keyboard? Oh, man. I think I was like eight or nine. Yeah. And then the kids who could afford piano lessons would come to my house, and I would have them tape the keys that I needed to press to get the song that I wanted to play. Wild. Yeah. Did you have any artists that were just like really turning you on or making you feel like, man, I have to learn that song. I have to learn, I want to make music like that. Um, the Lion King soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Evita <laughs> with Madonna. I loved Madonna. Um, I liked Roberta Flack. Yeah. Like my mom would just sing these songs, but she raised five kids on her own. So the singing slowly stopped, but I would go into my room and shut the door and listen to Kink radio yeah. and sing Walking in Memphis. Oh yeah, Mark Kahn. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I don't really know the words, but yeah. I'm just gonna make some sounds. Yeah. So. And church uh, was a place where this all kind of came together. You, asked to, you were asked to lead a, a song mm -hmm. and, and uh, suddenly you found yourself, as you said, kind of getting out of the way and I mean, something it, happened. It took a long time. I'm still learning how to get out of my own way, but yeah. I remember when I specifically sang it in this moment, I felt like every single pore in my body opened up and I was drenched in sweat. And all I could think about was James Brown <laughs> and why people had towels and would wipe his face. Um, <laughs> it all made sense then. Um, and I don't know, honestly, I feel like I was resentful for the gift because I was so terrified. Mm -hmm. um, and why me? I never wanted to do this. Wild. But it didn't feel like something I could just toss to the side. It felt yeah. like someone left a baby on my front porch and I love kids and I just can't hand this child off to anyone so I kind of have to take care of it until I can pass it on. That's wild. Yeah. Now were you surprised by the success of your first record? It's like people actually liked it and then suddenly you're on the charts and... Yeah, I still am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still get asked to play shows. I'm like, how do you know me? Yeah. Um, I'm my own manager at the moment, and so there's, I have like, I brought like six CDs with me. I'm sure mm. if I had like a team around me, I would have had a Someone could box. have advised right. you, yeah. Someone, some I'm like, I have some stickers and yeah. a card. Just email me and I'll send yeah. you a link or something. Okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you definitely need some help, Liz. <laughs> I do, help me, I'm yeah, poor. Yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be okay. It's okay. gonna work out. I so this so. new record is different. You spend a lot more time uh, working on this yourself, and, you, and you're a songwriter now. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on, you could say it. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like, oh, I can do a cartwheel, therefore I can join the circus. That's right. what it feels like. Like yeah. I wrote like a few songs, now I'm a songwriter. I would yeah. never want to, I don't know. It's okay, you gotta start somewhere. I mean, I should mention also, again, let me just share with our audience that you had some serious health problems oh, yeah. as a young person. Yeah. Uh, kidney transplant. Yeah. So all of that stuff. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a real hurdle to kind of get to jump over, and and I suspect that being uh, confronted with your own vulnerability, if not mm -hmm. your own mortality, mm -hmm. um, probably woke you up in some ways, right? Yeah, straight up, I'm woke. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it kind of makes you take risk in ways that a lot of people are afraid to. Um, I sing faith-based music, but I don't really get a lot of invitations to sing at churches. And so when people would ask me to play certain venues, like there's a place in Portland that doubles as a strip club, and what are you, I don't know. Um, and I remember going in there and there's like cages hanging from the ceiling, but they wanted me to sing my record and I'm thinking, what, do you, you know what I'm talking about, right? But it didn't matter yeah. because it was about bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And that not only woke me up uh, to me reevaluating what my faith actually looks like and what it means, 
but also it's like people are really hungry to connect and yeah. just come together. Right. Yeah. Around, and, and be real around each other. Yeah. But is it harder, do you think, now uh, in this, to, to, be a, to be a sort of an out Christian writer and singer in this age of evangelical support for, for politicians who may not live up to Christian ideals or as yeah. a woman or as a black woman? Is that, yeah. is that a tricky road to walk yeah. to? Because I'm sure a lot of the uh, religious leaders wouldn't like me as well. They wouldn't like some of my views. But I do have a story that kind of reminded me of why I do this. Um, the, I'm going to tell a Bible story, okay? So I don't know what people believe, but there's a story where John the Baptist is about to be beheaded, and he has these disciples, and he, go, he sends them to Jesus, and he's like, I need you to ask Jesus is he the Messiah or are we still waiting? And in typical Jesus fashion, when these disciples ask this question, he doesn't say, yes, I am the Messiah. He says, have the blind received their sight? Have the lame begun to walk? Um, has the leopard been cleansed? Have the poor received the good news? And I played a show two and a half weeks ago at this club, uh, at this bar in Morro Bay called The Siren. It was so, I felt like I had an outer body experience when I was singing and people were dancing. And after the show, this woman came up to me and she told me that she had brain surgery and she had to relearn how to walk. Hmm. And in that year, all she wanted to do was dance. And that's what she did that night was mm. dance wow. at my show. And so in my mind, what I've been reminded of is that if those things aren't happening, if people are not receiving their sight and are walking and are coming together in love and in light and actually coming together instead of being afraid of your neighbor, then I would have to say that is not of the kingdom and that is not Christianity. And I don't know what God would want to tear people apart. So that made me sweat because some people might argue against that, but I feel like doing music and traveling and this next record being true to what I know to be true in my faith and in my walk and my experience, like no one can argue against that testimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't see, I don't see any, um, you know, when you're talking about your inspiration and when you're talking about what makes you uh, feel like singing yeah. and when you're writing songs mm -hmm. about how you feel I don't mm -hmm. think any, anybody's going to argue with you no. I think when you go into a setting where you're in a traditional uh, church community and mm -hmm. you realize that you know maybe women aren't really getting respected as much as they might yeah, is that something you've seen before? yes <laughs> I've experienced that I am a woman um, can't prove it to you right now but I am a woman um, yeah I experienced that. Um, I've the very few church experiences that I've been invited into. It's mostly male dominated, and we know the history of women in the church. But I am not uh, industry standards, mm -hmm. whether it's um, within the religious realm or outside of it. We kind of got that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so for myself, I have to learn. I feel like Moana, like I always have to remind myself, like, this is who I am. This is who I was created to be. This is the opportunity that I have. And my job isn't to save people. It's to bring them together in love. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, uh, you, you've got the gift. <laughs> and uh, we, we want you to keep going. I should mention... I should mention quickly that uh, uh, Jackie, your keyboardist, yeah, is amazing. She is. And she's been with you for a long time? She has. Yeah. Man, she's lost so many jobs touring with me, and I'm right. just like, she's so dedicated, and she's really talented, and I'm just so thankful to have had so many experiences with her. That includes, like, car wrecks and getting our car broken into and me falling down the stairs and breaking my toe, and maybe she laughed at that moment, <laughs> but I'm alive and I'm okay. <laughs> I got, ch well, I didn't get chased by a bear. I saw a bear in Alaska, and I ran, and I know you're not supposed to run, but it scared the hell out of me, and I had to leave. Yeah, those are, his... those are band bonding experiences. 
You and Jackie have some stuff, yeah. some stories you can share, which is yeah. cool. And that just kind of happens on the road. Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to get back to music. I just want to say it's great getting to know you a little bit. Uh, and I, I look forward to sort of, you know, diving in more deeply to the, the entirety of your album. Yeah. Um, and the record again is called Save Me mm -hmm. and uh, we're here with you and we're, now we're going to get back to some more music thanks for inviting yeah. us out would you welcome back please Liz Weiss